राइट मैम ओवर टू यू प्रिंसिपल्स डॉक्टर प्रिंसिपल जी डी सी प्रस्टीजियस एडिशनल डायरेक्टर डी एस टी डॉक्टर नासिर शाह हु कुड नॉट ज्वाइन अस ऑन दीट बिकॉज ही इज हैविंग सम इम्पोर्टेंट मीटिंग डिस्टिंग स्पीकर colleagues and my dear students i dr gurpreet kaur assistant professor chemistry gcw parade on behalf of gcw parade and gdc chennai welcome you all to the two day webinar organized conjointly by both the colleges and sponsored by jnk science technology and innovation council department of science technology department of science and technology jnk government with her featuring on the cover of time magazine and having been named kid of the year gitanjali rao has once again proved that indian women when properly equipped with the application of science and technology can she is just 15 years old and has already done so many scientific inventions if she can do this why can't we the student of colleges all of us believe that human potential is nearly limitless but we know that having potential is not the same as doing something with it our goal with this webinar is to work on the ideas that will help you women to actually execute on your dreams the theme of the webinar aptly puts it as harnessing science and technology for women welfare of jammu region i would now request principal sir dr s p sarswat the driving force for the whole webinar to deliver his introductory remarks sir over to you uh, thank you gurpreet uh, good morning to one and all uh, on the behalf of uh, uh, staff and students of government degree college chennai and staff and students of uh, government college for women parade ground jammu i extend a very warm and hearty welcome to our worthy speakers uh, who have very kindly spared their precious time to address our staff and students sir sharda potukuchi school of biotechnology shri mata vishnu devi university kakreal professor suresh bihari lal department of zoology mohan lal sukhadia university udaipur sir mohan lal sukhadia university udaipur sir Uh, ji principal sir can just check it uh, if the voice is coming fine Praveen sir are you there Yes I am there we are just checking it out Okay okay uh, meanwhile you can introduce about the event also about I have to come uh, Yes So yes ma'am there's some technical uh, thing is there that his voice is okay. coming up so you can introduce okay, okay. event our sponsors and the supporting agencies also all the departments and oh, then uh, we will we'll move to dr shat okay okay 
हेलो सर कैन यू हेयर मी प्रिंसिपल सर sir um, i would like to say the purpose of the webinar is uh, to uh, tap the untapped potential of the women of the jnk in particularly of the students of colleges and we have so many students girl students over there in parade college in gandhinagar college and i mean all the colleges of jammu region but they are not much aware of the scientific technologies and scientific applications that they can use for the betterment after their graduation and even during their graduation so uh, the dst has uh, uh, aptly focused on this area so that women can be equipped with this scientific talent so uh, i am going to introduce the first speaker of the webinar so the first speaker of the webinar is dr sharda potukuchi presently she is working as associate professor and head at the school of biotechnology shri mata vaishno devi university katra j and k her area of specialization is plants plant tissue culture for secondary metabolite and production and genetic engineer ma'am is phd from punjab university chandigarh and she did her post doc from university of kwazulu -Lu natal durban south africa she has authored many books published many research papers in journals of national and international repute she is recipient of several awards including young scientist award 2013 international plant scientist award 2016 and is currently working on application of bioreactors as future technology for the production of plant bioactives and production of therapeutic bioactive proteins from the plant culture so ma'am please kindly enlighten us with your words ma'am over to you shard the ma'am okay um uh, a very good morning to one and all uh, i thank uh, principal for aid college uh, principal ma'am uh, pragya khanna ma'am from uh, chennai college and uh, uh, dr gurpreet for giving me this opportunity uh to be a part of your um, event uh it's unfortunate that we are facing these kinds of uh, the uh, uh, conditions that we have to be meeting virtually rather than uh, how we used to interact at parade college so um well this itself is technology science and improvement and we are adjusting to the kinds of situations the world is facing um it's very uh, enlightening to know that uh, the parade college has taken this kind of an initiative uh, to conduct the webinar for the benefit of the students staff and the faculty members of the college and uh, the region um because after all uh, we have to go on things have to continue and we need, we cannot just uh, um, uh, make things at a stand still so uh, i thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you um and uh, because it's going to be a webinar so i wanted that i should be talking to you so that um, it will be more uh, that we have an interaction rather than me just showing you a few slides and uh, uh, talking in that ways so um well coming to the theme of the webinar that has been planned by parade college it's the need of the hour i would say and uh, there is a, a need for harnessing uh, the technologies that we are available that we have available the resources that are available especially uh, women play a very important key role in the life system and any enterprise any um, industry any uh, educational institute any research institute and um uh, the scenario in india is also changing from where we used to have the traditional kind of system where women were uh, mostly home bound or usually related to the domestic chores and we are now moving out and uh, coming up at par with our counterparts so um it's the need of the hour that we need to um, share uh, the ideas with the women and especially the girl students 
who are going to be the ambassadors for tomorrow, they need to take up the lead from where we have we have laid the foundations and uh, go on to express themselves, develop the newer technologies and uh, especially relate to the findings that are available and uh, utilize the resources for sustainable uh, cultivation and sustainable existence of uh, the um, mankind especially uh, in the region of uh, J jnk and jammu in particular we find that there is a lot of things that can be done or there is such a big scope for uh, improvement and the utilization of science and technology and the resources that we have available so um, Basically, humans have always wondered about uh, things that happen around us, uh, from little things like watching a spinning wheel to a mass stellar explosions. And it usually makes our mind to think why something happens and what may be causing it. And it is science that gives words to our consciousness to understand and pass on the knowledge to others to contain the curiosity. There are some indigenous minds who go even a step further of using this knowledge to invent things that work on the governing principles of science, which is called as technology, or rather now the best friend of mankind, which has been making our lives simpler since we started off our journey as sapiens. From looking at sand and thinking it to be just a sand and to extracting silicon for circuit chips from it is science. So who thought that the mundane uh, sand, which was not going to be utilized only for the building constructions, we have put it to utilize it and we are making so many silicon chips and using it in our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we are getting upset when we don't get a response uh, after a blue tick in the WhatsApp. But we should also remember that we passed through those times when it took us mm. 10 days to get a mail and to be able to speak over a telephone was a dream that seemed impossible to achieve. Today, we experience our reality in crisp 4K videos. And if we think back a few generations, then the world was still in the black and white. Even back then, we had only photographs. And further back, we only had the paintings to pass on from, from generation to generation. And the art forms and writing was a delight. And this is all a timeline of progress in technology. Our generation is pretty new compared to all living beings who have dwelled this mighty planet. It was just a while back when we decided to leave hunting and to settle down to farming. The transition was not overnight, nor was it easy though. But it was a certain someone who was tired of wandering around and thought of growing plants and to harvest them year after year and then put new seeds to repeat the same process. So from there or then on, there was plenty of food for everyone in the community. People could bond and live together, perhaps even exchange ideas, things like gifts, knowledge, food, and more new seeds to be able to get different plants to consume from all over the world. Almost everything we eat today was started to be grown then. Living together with food and animals also brings another aspect in life, like diseases. There was a time when people didn't understand what causes diseases. And today, we live in a time where some diseases have been eradicated from our lives. We know that they will not come again forever. And wounds we thought to be fatal in past can now be cured with just medicines, surgery, and of course, we cannot forget these new diseases that appear every now and then, like the Spanish flu, the plague, and now this corona. That would bring the world to a complete standstill for a while. Well, human revolutions happen even faster than the average time it takes for an evolution to occur. It is a boon and a curse. When we think of a deer being chased by a cheetah, the cheetah is fast enough to catch its prey. And the deer, on the other hand, can outrun it fast and even for longer distances to evade from capture. Which is where evolution comes in play that has shaped the deer 
to adapt to the apex predator and save its life and pass on its genes. However, when humans revolutionized hunting with tools, there was no room for evolution to adapt so quickly. It is also highly debated fact that humans have been responsible for extinction of many life forms, plant and li animal life forms, and even the microbes, basically the biodiversity from the face of the earth during the hunting era. Revolution is also a boon we cherish widely today as we decided to farm our lands, transforming the planet forever. Humans then also thought of storing the food and to be able to eat food in seasons when there was no produce and so it gave rise to the industrial revolution. Today, we have not only the solution to storing the food, but also to know how to access it from any part of the world to your doorstep and to your plate. Thanks to the internet, digital revolution, science, technology, and the modern gadgets that we have, feel free to appreciate when you order from Zomato, Swiggy, Big Basket, and whatnot the next time. Our careers have also been revolutionized with time. From being able to plant the crop, to harvest, to be able to grow specifically certain kinds of plant and animal varieties, like, for example, a yellow capsicum, the question a yellow capsicum, a red capsicum, maybe broccoli, which we never heard of, an avocado from Africa, or any other place in the world. We have now got the facility to meet the de market demands in, a, in our own country. Today, with the emerging technology, we not only know how to grow a crop, but also we know when to grow a crop and when the rains are going to come, how the weather is going to be and how I have to fare with my agricultural land, how I should improve the pH of the soil and how I should make my crops insect pest resistant and get the best quality of the produce by artificial selection methods, gene mutations in crops, etc., etc. With career also come skills of ability to perform tasks well and to perfect that ability with time for more precision. Back then, a skill to put seeds in the soil and to water them and see them grow was enough. But now we are not satisfied with that. We know that it is a part of our life. Today, in the changing times, our dire need is for creating artificially intelligent mechanized tools or drones that are able to observe plant growth, crop growth, cycles, and to automate the whole farming process without us being able, without us actually needing to go into the field. And our farmers are actually doing that in many of the regions of the country. A demand for more mental skills than physical and a need for more simpler lifestyle than strenuous is more important now. So we have adapted biotechnology into our day-to-day -day life. And because of, uh, I am a plant biotechnologist, basically, so I would be dwelling a little bit more on how biotechnology as such has helped to improve our lifestyle and our day-to-day -day needs. So if you look at ba the basic definition of biotechnology, it can be broadly defined as that application of natural sciences and engineering in the direct or indirect use of living organisms or part of organisms in their natural or modified forms in an innovative manner for the production of goods or services and to improve the existing industrial production processes. Yes, women and men and all the students who are aspiring to become biotechnologists or techn study technology science in any field can contribute their bit to developing various kinds of technologies for the industrial development and sustainable economic growth of the country. If you look per se in the area of biotechnology, it has touched major fields uh, for improving the lifestyle of the mankind and significantly we find that there are contributions wherein we have we have made the facilities or made available the resources for better healthcare 
So as I was just telling, we have the facilities wherein we know that there are certain kinds of fatal diseases. We have been able to eradicate them. We have been able to develop such good surgical methods. And not only that we are using the technology, but we are now also amalgamating traditional knowledge that has been passed on from our generations ever since man came up and revolutionized or innovated from that time. We know that there is a lot of indigenous knowledge that is available and we have had been using it for better healthcare facilities. Now we have amalgamated it with the pharmaceutical tools and techniques that are available, the surgical equipments that are available, and we have actually modernized everything. Now we are having these robotic arms. We are able to do surgeries by using the tools of the computational technologies, bioinformatics, and we are predicting the methods by which we are able to develop newer and better drugs for the treatment. Had it not been those facilities which were available, probably the vaccine for the corona would have taken us more and more duration to get it. And we have been able to now understand how the living organisms are, or the hazardous organisms are actually interacting with our uh, human life, our environment. And we have been taking those measures for eradicating them. Not only have, been, um, ha have we improved the life expectancy where it was earlier, something like about 50 to 60 years, we have now improved it. Where now today, as on today, the life expectancy has reached 85 years, which is a real great uh, boon because of the technology that has contributed for uh, the uh, uh, better medicines or the facilities and the healthcare products that are now available. We have also contributed significantly for enhanced food security. We now are using artificial intelligence and uh, those kinds of uh, the uh, meteorological tools and techniques for prediction, etc and the genetic engineering for the production of various kinds of transgenic animals and plants, wherein we have uh, improved the quality and the quantity of the food substances that are available or the food resources, plant resources, animal resources that are available. Not only have we just improved on them, but we have also value added them. For example, we have the golden rice and we have the uh, um, genetically modified banana, which is containing various kinds of vitamins and vaccines. We have the uh, genetically modified cattle and poultry, which are giving us better quality of the milk and the eggs, for uh, which are having various kinds of the vitamins, essential vitamins, which are needed for our uh, uh, nourishment, especially in those areas which are malnourished. So we have actually contributed significantly to the food security and the scarcity conditions in various developing countries. We have also uh, improved on the various supplies of potable water which are available. We have now realized uh, uh, in the past century or so that water is the major source of the food bone pathogens or um, we have devised those kinds of methods wherein we are able to uh, get the clean or the better quality of the drinking water. We have been able to take those measures uh, wherein we are able to reach the uh, water to those areas where water was unheard of also. In some of the far-flung areas where, where there are no rivers, we have seen to it that there are certain kinds of methods available for the transportation and the supply of water, not only at the personal level, but also at the various governmental initiatives that have been taken up and have improved the uh, or have helped the women in those domestic areas. We have also contributed because of science and technology to efficient industrial developmental processes because of which we are having various kinds of consumer products that are available from the biotechnology. We have developed various kinds of bioprocess technologies. We have these various fermenters and uh, the um, uh, genetically modified microorganisms that have been used in those uh, in those bioreactors and the fermentation technology, which has made available various kinds of pharmaceutical products, various kinds of food substances or the additives for the foods, the packaged food, etc., has been made easily available 
who had thought maybe 100 years ago we would be able to use uh, milk after a period of six months yes we now have that kind of technology where we are packaging milk uh, by what is called as a very simple ultra heat treatment strategy and we can store the milk and those uh, soldiers who are there in the border areas are able to access them because of these kinds of technologies that have been developed and they, they are reaching the far flung areas and those sources where we had uh, thought it was unheard of. There are various methods by which we are able to transform the raw materials into finished goods, which are of very high quality. And now India is able to export such kinds of consumer products uh, to the world. And we are also becoming economically sound because of these kinds of processes which have been developed indigenously. We are also looking towards the uh, protection of the environment because we have been hearing in the past decade or so about climate change, the greenhouse gases and the global warming and whatnot on, and also uh, of the ice age which is to come and the extinction of mankind. No, we will not allow such kinds of things to happen and science and technology is going to be looking not only for the development of mankind but because we need our environment our surroundings also to be protected so we are also taking care of the pollutions that have been created by the uh, the devastating devastation that has caused because of the uh, development that has taken place by mankind for its urbanization so we are now looking towards air water and soil pollution and the methods for detoxification of the hazardous waste that we have pumped into these areas. And we have developed or we have also various kinds of government and NGOs and various kinds of strategic bodies that have been initiated from time to time to take steps and measures to clean our environment from these hazardous waste. We are now imposing various kinds of taxes on those polluting industries so that we are able to have a better and cleaner environment. We in the region of Jammu and Kashmir are very fortunate that we have good air to breathe, good water resources, and our soil is still protected. But if we are not going to take the suitable measures, soon we will become like any other metro city in the world or in our country. So women can actually contribute significantly and there are Hordes of career opportunities in these areas of biotechnology that I have just been discussing, these five major areas of biotechnology that I have been discussing, where the resources are available within the state and we need to focus our mind and the, uh, the technology that is available where, where we can have better resources made to the made available to the other parts of the country and we can become a source of inspiration for the generations to come so i just uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether i have uh, over spread my time but uh, i will just end off by saying that um, we may be the universe's way of experiencing itself and science of course enables us to experience life better so we should not forget to enjoy the show and also be a part of it um, thank you once again to the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts with you um, and uh, if you have any questions or if you want me to speak a few more i can continue <laughs> Thank you, Shata ma'am. You have very beautifully summarized the application of biotechnology and sciences for the welfare of mankind. But there are some we are highly thankful to you for sparing your precious time and enlighten us with your words. Ma'am, there are some questions from sure. students. They are yeah, sure, sure. Students. I'll take, I'll take uh, one, yeah. one of the students of semester five, Navreen Ko, she's asking, can yeah. artificial process of genetics in daily life harm human life or our planet? 
Okay, it's very nice question. Yes, that is one of the fears that we have been experiencing of genetic engineering. So when uh, we started off with genetic engineering, there were the aspiration that probably something which is foreign and our uh, environment or our human body will not take it or accept it. And there may be certain kinds of allergies or there may be certain kinds of uh, mishappenings that may occur in the environment. But uh, see, biotechnology or genetic engineering is that field of science if practiced properly and in the uh, 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 following all the biosafety measures and if done in a very consistent and methodological way can prove to be beneficial. If that was not so, you, the countries, the developed countries, so to say, like the USA and uh, UK and uh, uh, the uh, European continent, they are depending now on the genetically modified food crops of soybean, corn, uh, potato and uh, um, uh, the oil uh, crops for their day-to-day, uh, -day, for meeting their day-to-day -day needs. Yes, in India, we are still slightly skeptical. We have not yet given the green signal for any of the food or animal varieties for which are genetically modified. The only genetically modified uh, agricultural crop that is commercially cultivated in India is cotton, probably because we don't eat it. But uh, we have found that the, there is actually, if it is properly done and there are certain kinds of methodologies that you are going to be following for uh, checking the safety uh, principles that have to be incorporated or the genes that have to be incorporated, it can be a foolproof method and it can actually prove to be beneficial as compared to the uh, routine or the conventional breeding techniques. And we should adapt to those newer technologies and accept them. Just like as I was telling you, in the olden days, we just thought that the telephone, we were very happy to be with the telephone or the postage system. But now we know that we cannot live without that mobile phone in your hand. You don't leave it for even five minutes. So uh, whenever you wake up in the night also, you will just check on to see, oh, had there been some update? Is there something happening? Yes, now we want to be in, live in today's time. So if we want to live in today's time, we have to accept genetic engineering. Uh, yes, uh, good week, ma'am. I can take some other question. Or maybe you can just uh, write it in the chat so I can uh, read and uh, answer it. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. So yes, if you have a question, you can chat, write it in the chat so I can uh, check your, the at and I can answer you also. Okay, chat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so otherwise, so, you can ask me. No problem. Yeah, ma'am. She's asking. Do yeah. we have laws to regulate genetic engineering in India? Okay, yes. Uh, it, uh, it's a very nice question. We are having what are called as the biosafety guidelines in India and they are practiced very properly and they are implemented by the Department of Biotechnology under the Ministry of Science and Technology. If you just visit the website of Department of Biotechnology, DBT as it's called, Government of India, and just uh, uh, in the search button, you can just write biosafety guidelines. Uh, there are biosafety guidelines which are written. So anyone, any scientist, any researcher, any institution who is doing any kinds of research in biotechnology has to follow certain kinds of guidelines. All institutions who are doing any kind of biotechnological research, they need to have what is called as a biosafe, institutional biosafety committee instituted in the committee, in the institution. Yani ki jo bhi institution mein aap kaam karte ho, uska jo head of institution hai, wo ek committee appoint karta hai, aur wo jo committee hai, wo regularly monitor karta hai aapke experiments ko. Kyunki agar aisa nahi hoga, jo aap aaj ki date pe jo Wuhan wala case hua hai, wo ho jayega. Ye ek mishappening hua hai. Ye ek accidental release of the organism ho gaya. So in order to check this, and it's not that now, we have been, uh, the biosafety uh, guidelines have been implemented way back in 1995 in India, okay, uh, by the DBT. And uh, it's not only uh, that we are making guidelines for India, but we also have world uh, regulatory bodies, like we have the Food and Agriculture Organization in the USA. It has guidelines uh, which are under the United Nations. And United Nations has given the task of 
राइटिंग डाउन द गाइडलाइंस क्योंकि टाइम टू टाइम क्या होता है कि आपके टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज हो जाता है आपकी जो न्यूअर डेवलपमेंट्स होती हैं तो देर इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन त्रियस्ट इन इटली कॉल्ड एस द ICGEB, okay? It's an international organization for genetic engineering, research in genetic engineering, and we have one of its uh, branch or uh, uh, organizations or uh, research institute in New Delhi. So that ICGEB actually monitors at the global level. यानी कि यहाँ खाली ये India के level पे नहीं है. DBT monitor करता है, but ICGEB जो है guidelines देता है और DBT के through वो uh, time to time monitor करता है. जिन भी institution में आप uh, कोई भी ऐसे organism पे काम करते हो, all organisms basically living organisms have been classified into four or five levels based on the hazard that they pose to the environment. एंड टू द पर्सन हु इज वर्किंग एंड टू द ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑल्सो तो जैसे कि अगर आप कोई ईकोला या ऐसे कोई नॉर्मल से प्लांट्स पे काम कर रहे हो तो हमें पता है कि ये हजार्डस नहीं है तो उनके उन पर आपको कोई सेफ्टी मेजर ज्यादा इंप्लीमेंट करने की जरूरत नहीं है पर जैसे ही आप कहोगे कि मुझे माइक्रो बैक्टीरियम ट्यूबिकोलोसिस पे काम करना है जो टीबी कॉज करता है या आप कोई वायरस पे काम करते हो जैसे इबोला वायरस हो गया या एच आई वी वायरस वगैरह देन यू नीड टू इम्प्लीमेंट सर्टन काइंड ऑफ फैसिलिटीज इन योर इंस्टीट्यूट सो बिफोर यू इम्प्लीमेंट दो फैसिलिटीज यू हैव टू सीक द परमिशन ऑफ द डीबीटी विच इज द गवर्निंग बॉडी इन इंडिया विच फॉल्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी तो वो तो अगर न्यू uh, डेली में है और सेंट्रल लेवल पे है आपके स्टेट में स्टेट जे एंड के साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का बोर्ड है तो आपको उनसे परमिशन सीख करना है कोई भी हजार्डस ऑर्गेनिज्म पे वर्क करने के लिए तो जब इतने सारे रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस के अंडर आप काम करते हो तो तब चांस मिनिमल हो जाता है आपके कोई भी हजार्ड होने का या कोई मिसहेपनिंग होने का थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू uh it means uh, biotechnology and genetic engineering when properly regulated uh, can be a boon to the mankind and uh, it has already it has already solved many of the problems faced by the human kind thank you ma'am we are highly thank thankful you. to you for sparing your thank time and uh, uh, enlighten us with your words thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you okay uh now i am going to introduce you with the second speaker of uh, the webinar and sir i am literally short of words to summarize uh, your inspirational profile but still i'll try to put in my words so the next speaker is dr suresh bihari we have with us dr suresh bihari lal ji and he is from mohan lal sukhadia university udaipur and dr gulpreet will share his profile with us and then we'll be listening to his worthy words and his expert guidance on the topic What am I going to speak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
Dr. Lal, if we can like request you to initiate because there might be some technical glitch also. Uh, we, we do have one of uh, your student uh, with us as well who has just said a few words, but they, they, they seem to be identical with the words of every, every student you have made, you have taught and you have guided. Now, uh, conveying regards to you and uh, talking about uh, the benefit that we are going to get, the students who are listening to you, the teachers who are going to listen to you over the YouTube live also. So we, we invite you to kindly address us so that we can take the session ahead and uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll move uh, to get introduced to more insights uh, on this topic in this webinar which is about harnessing science and technology for women welfare in Jammu region and agencies and institutions also. Uh, yes, uh, Gurpreet ma'am. Hello. Ma uh, here, here. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello, Over sir. Sorry. Uh, okay. I got disconnected. I don't know. Um, se aapko nahi aai meri. I'm so sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay. Please go ahead. So, the second speaker uh, of the webinar is Dr. Suresh Pehari Lal, who is a professor in uh, Mohanlal Sukhadiya University, Udaipur. He is PhD from McMaster University, Hamiltonian, Ontario, Canada. He is one of the renowned zoologists of the country who was awarded a WHO fellowship to do research in USA. He is a visiting associate professor in Czechoslovakia, Germany, Scotland, Mexico, and Hong Kong. He is a Okay, so we might be having some internet issue or something. Uh, Professor Lal, we won't delay our own benefits. So can we invite you humbly and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be getting to know about you through the worthy words that are going to come from your side. So we wish to request you to kindly uh, address the students, the teachers and everyone who's watching us over the GCW Parade Ground Jammu YouTube channel. Uh, sir, over to you, sir. I have just requested you to unmute yourself. So there's a small button on the screen uh, which will say unmute and we'll hear your voice. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Please. All okay. perfect, sir. Okay. Good morning to all the students, faculty members, and other participants who have joined in this webinar. Uh, I wish to share my experience as a teacher, as a researcher, as an educational consultant, and uh, being associated with various bodies with the UGC, ICMR, CSIR, and others over a long period of time, including also UPSC. So I have divided my uh, presentation, which is actually the operational aspects of how to uh, how the girls and women of Jammu and Kashmir can use science and technology for their uh, for improving their quality of life and empower themselves. From a historical perspective, we know that there is a pandemic of infanticide, feticides, and other forms of violence of grave nature against a girl child and a woman across the country. And that does not spare Jammu Kashmir as well. But the point is that the barriers for the girl education and for women to participate in science and technology come right from homes, from families, from society, and from the state. There are numerous programs which have come in the last 73 years looking for inspiring the women and girl child of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, but there have been barriers as well. The barriers are in the form of social turmoils, political turmoils, defense turmoils and others, which prevent a girl child from walking out of her home to go to school and college and university systems. 
the funding has not also been any limitation. There are programs of INSPIRE from DST, there are programs of UGC, there are programs of CSIR, there are international programs of UNESCO, DARD, Fulbright scholarships and others. But what is lacking is that on the ground level, we are not able to implement what is being suggested on paper. So there's a big gap between what we say and what we do on ground. Now, one of the biggest aspect of any change that can come in the lives of girls and women is education, which is the source of empowerment, which is the source of entrepreneurship, which is the source of quality of life, which is the uh, source of professionalism, creativity, accountability, and responsibility. These are some of the features that have to be inducted in a girl child have, and in women so that they can go forward in life and make use of the science and technology. Now we use often use a word STEM, which means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And we plead that the STEM concept must be inducted into our syllabi at school level, which are the feeder channels for colleges, universities, and research centers. Without proper school systems, we are not able to turn out youth in the areas of science and technology at the higher levels of education. So there is this gap that we need to look at. Now, as I have suggested in my uh, article, which is available for distribution to all of you, that in while you make a syllabi, the five basic questions that are there to be answered and which remain to be answered as yet as what to teach, that's one. Why to teach, that's second. When to teach, that is third. The third, fourth is how to teach. And the fifth is when to teach, who will teach, I'm sorry. So you, you have all the participants in the education system covered under these five questions. Are we able to now find answers to these five questions in making a syllabi? And if the syllabus is not right, the training program is not right, the product of such training programs are also not right to play a role in society, state, or the nation. I wish to also point out to you that the ASO came, which is responsible for evaluating the engineering uh, degrees in the colleges and universities, has come out that nine out of 10 engineers that are turned out are unemployable. And not only that, it goes further to say that they are not only unemployable, but also untrainable. That speaks loud enough. For what kind of training, what kind of programs, what kind of online protocols we are delivering to the young mind? Now, the millennial kid, those who are born in 2019, uh, 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 20, 20, 20, uh, 21, uh, they are facing this big main problem. What are the areas in which they should go? Uh, Dr. Shada talked about biotechnology and engineering, genetic engineering. And, uh, but all these things can be achieved when we are in a position to remove social discrimination, economic discrimination. We are able to also remove the polit bring peace in the political scenario of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. We are also able to build new customs, new traditions, new rituals, new disciplines in the area of science and technology. I have thought that uh, when you make a curriculum and the new education policy says that in 10 years, the new curriculum for schools, colleges, universities should be made, which should be interdisciplinary in nature. Now, this interdisciplinary in nature means that you have all aspects of social sciences, sciences, and others, including engineering, mathematics, and technology, included as a part of the syllabus, right from primary to secondary to, uh, to senior secondary and to college and university level. We need experts, think tanks, to come with ideas to put in the form of syllabi. 
we need writers in the form of book booking uh, book writing projects have to be undertaken now all these things that i am talking about must address three or four things do these training programs in science and technology evolve our girl child into entrepreneurs do they evolve them into scientists and technologists policy planners administrators mentors and monitors are they going to do that and unless they deliver that kind of thing we are talking in thin air we are not uh, taking the ground reality we need faculty trained faculty which are trained in new concepts of science technology engineering mathematics it and other resources the uh, other areas there are several areas which women are which are women centric in uh, in the state of jammu and kashmir i have been uh, to jammu twice thanks to dr pragya khanna and other friends the other areas uh, that are hotel tourism and also areas in the that entail geological survey of the state of jammu and kashmir what are the mineral deposits what are the uh, natural resources that are available how can they be harvested how the sci young scientists and engineers can go around mapping those areas and finding out the viability of them to be put into industry now dr shada talked about food and uh, other things i want to say that even in the food industry we have enormous scope there is a scope of cultures of fish prawn crabs fish culture of mushrooms and honey honey bee uh, rearing there is a culture of uh, vegetables apples or cherries and others can we think of something like what they have in gujarat the uh, amul corporation you have a fruit corporation of jammu kashmir where they bring their fruit and uh, along with it the process industry that processes those fruits and vegetables and do all the modern technology to freeze them send them export them and improve their quality of life it goes without saying that education science and technology is the source of empowerment for all sections of the society why the society must make use of science and technology i have often talked about uh, biotechnology and uh, genetic engineering now which is summed up into a much more broader area which is nano biotechnology we are not aware of the dimensions of nano biotechnology we are not even uh, aware of the dimensions of a nano scale we are now in the threshold of preparing nano chips nano sensors nano cylinders nano cubes which have wide applications in defense industry complex our young girls and women should train in the area of nano biotechnology infrastructure has to be produced in jammu to train people in the area of nano biotechnology you have just heard this year that one of the recipients of the biotechnology nobel prize was a lady who worked on crisp a cas 9 technique of genetic engineering we have to train people in the area of gene editing gene transfer gene replacement stem cells in the medical science the medical science itself awaits revolutionary changes as the stem cell techniques get developed you can have artificial tissue for facial cosmetic surgery for Uh, preparing limbs for preparing heart kidney for transplantation these are new frontiers that are emerging in stem cell research which will revolutionize the entire field of medical health services stem cell centers research centers are available in some parts of india why shouldn't jammu have a stem cell research center for training young girls and women in the area of stem cell technology and the medical doctors can train themselves and bring about the changes where are those studies in jammu kashmir about genetics jammu kashmir represent a heterogeneous population of people 
is the genetic mapping done is dna fingerprinting done of different plants different castes different races that live in jammu and kashmir as have there been proper studies done on genetic disorders endocrine disorders and the treatment that is required to be done now we have entered a world where the gene therapies are on the verge of becoming a reality gene based products are a reality nucleotide sequences are on sale in the international trade and commerce to have a designed protein that have wide pharmaceutical applications we are also on the verge of gene transfer technology which is extremely important in agriculture in veterinary science in horticulture science we want we can have insulin gene injected into potato you don't have to have an insulin injection you need only a potato which is non invasive nutritional that delivers you free from the problems of diabetes 1 and 2 the researchers in israel have shown that the spider web contains a protein called resilin which has much more strength as compared to steel they use this resilin as a fiber to make bulletproof jackets they also have in vietnam from lotus stem extracted fibers to make scarf we sell at a cost of 200 dollars for tourist or we are in the threshold of finding genes by genomic mapping of useful animals and plants and transfer them into a species that can be produced on a very large scale in millions and billions we can handle the food problems by using biotechnology genetic engineering nano biotechnology and these are areas which i believe are front line areas you know the young girls and boys and others should know that we have reached a stage where we can change the genomic uh, capabilities of a ovum and a sperm i am a reproductive biologist and a man in endocrinology who worked in various parts of the world these are genetically engineered uh, ovum and sperms and the result of this are genetically engineered embryo which have desired qualities and these qualities can make a baby which is now called as a designer baby look at the evolution the enormous uh, challenges that the world will face 10 years from now 20 years from now where designers baby will be let off from laboratories with no parent to respond to no emotions no emotions are required because they don't have any parent their parents are this genetically engineered sperms and eggs and the incubator and the artificial uterus in which they have developed so they are owe nothing to anybody they are state owned products and they have no responsibility at all what imagine the scenario when such a population is heard on the world imagine the new changes that are coming the millennial kids born in 2000 must think now that their world is not the same as it was in the year 2000 and before you are going to enter a world which is full of science which is full of technology if you do not knock at the right doors you will be left behind and there is nobody to shed tears for you there is nothing that one can do to remove such things by bringing laws which are infractious genetic engineering on humans cannot be done good because even in china it is not done but artificially they have done this secretly as they have done in wuhan and i firmly believe that the wuhan uh, research center has been responsible for this corona virus and it's not an accidental leak it's a design experiment on a global scale that needs to be completely understood and its significance its impact on the international society and well being has to be analyzed critically without any passion 
to the young students who are attending this program i wish to say that un and take to uh, training in the tools and mechanisms of biotechnology and nanobiotechnology which is one of the upcoming areas take recourse to uh, cultivating plants animals and other forms of life develop a new ecosystem develop new food chains develop new geological realities new geographical areas have to be to be demarcated which are free from infections free from other types of ailments and they provide conditions that are healthy and they also provide conditions for the uh, forward movement of the young mind we also need in jammu kashmir uh, from the point of view of its strategic positions institute of language studies where you learn chinese which are the neighbors a chinese language center koreans which are big trade uh, people and also german and french more and more people should go because there is a career awaiting for them in defense intelligence in other areas of uh, uh, life in you know, home services and uh, homeland security and others so an institute of language studies and also an institute of defense studies is one of the uh, areas that has to be properly nurtured also an institute of high altitude research which is the right jammu is the right place jammu kashmir is the right place establishing institute of uh, high altitude research where young girls and boys can find career development and enrichment of their life can be possible through this a a survey of the flora and fauna and its uh, uh, genetic uh, study is also going to be very useful dna fingerprinting should be done you need an institute of forensic studies which will employ large number of persons from different walks of life and these are some of the areas which i feel are extremely important for the young girls and girls of the uh, area jammu and kashmir and for this what should happen we should have people coming who should train you in these areas there should be uh, i in my article have uh, given an example of china uh, and i want to repeat it uh, the print out will be available to you through your uh, organizer but just when i am speaking i will tell you what uh, the chinese experiment was in uh, china became independent in 1948 a year after india the chairman of the communist party of china mao zedong called a meeting of all the engineers doctors politicians planners administrators mentors and others and asked three questions question one was is the present by in china of any use to make it a superpower remember this syllabi was the british owned syllabi because china was very much owned by britain the second question was if the syllabi is not right and cannot make in china a superpower how much time will it take for china to develop new syllabi in science technology engineering mathematics industry and other areas and the third question is what should we do in the meantime to get over this problem the first answer was no the british left syllabi was extremely poor it could not make china a superpower the second question answer was it will take about 15 and 20 years for china to develop a new syllabi of science technology engineering mathematics and other areas the third answer was that in the meantime we should send our young men and women to western world to train themselves in the art and craft of science and technology the the person sitting in the meeting asked chairman mao what if these people who were sent to other parts of the world to learn new arts and craft of science and technology did not come back because of the attraction of a glamorous life there what will you do 
chairman smiled and said, they will hold their family at ransom and execute them if they don't return. Of course, we cannot do that in a democracy like India, which incidentally, uh, Kenneth Galbraith called as functional anarchy because whatever we do, there are counter forces to undo it. So that factor has a different dimension altogether. So eventually, for 15, 20 years, China was sleeping. People thought China was sleeping, but no. Every house was becoming a production hub. It was producing garments. It was preparing electronic devices. It was going through agriculture change, horticulture change, veterinary change. And today, look at China. It's a global power right at your door. And you are afraid of it. Every one of us including the U.S. is afraid of it. China's power is monumental due to hard work and passion of the young people and the administration that work for it. I hope that all these ideas will be carefully looked into by the young people in Jammu Kashmir. And uh, if there is anything that I can answer, it will be my pleasure to answer all your questions. Thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your words. Actually, I got disconnected because of some network issue. And so, uh, may I ask, sir, uh, there is a question from Neha Manhas. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course I do. Yeah, sir, there is a question from Neha Manhas. Uh, she's asking, uh, what are the uh, various prospective available to us uh, for joining sciences after graduation? See, uh, you can go into this area of uh, nanobiotechnology. You see, there are numerous training programs which are instituted by ICMR, ICAR, CSIR, UGC. And there are many institutes in the country where you can train yourself in specific areas. And those specific areas will be requiring that you are good in chemistry, you are good in mathematics, you are good in computer science, you are good in the in handling instruments, which is a big flaw in all Indian students. Doctor, hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, Doctor Gurpreet, could you please give me time to talk to Doctor Lal? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Please, sure. Uh, Dr. Lal, Jammu Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, CSIR lab has got all the facilities. You see, for COVID-19, it is only the BSL-3 lab facility in uh, CSIR lab. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these Jammu girls, they should be motivated to join RRL, yes, which yes, was the previous lab. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm totally I'm totally convinced with your ideas. <laughs> uh, to these uh, females. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, yes, go ahead. Are you listening? Your voice is breaking. And I have Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm so I get Anji, as I have I have already conveyed my uh, views. So you please, you can read it because there is some problem in net. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy you have shared excellent. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Hello. Yes. So, sir, there is a question from student. Yes. Are, are designing babies legal in India? No. Genetic engineering is prohibited on human beings. So, there's no. It is being done clandestinely in some uh, countries like China. So, right now it's not legal in India. No, it's not legal anywhere in the world. 
okay it's not legal anywhere in the world vishal i think your question is addressed uh, any question from the audience side any question from the audience side yes sir there is a question what are the career aspects of science and technology in j and k j and k you have enormous variety of medicinal plants you have enormous variety of unexplored geological strata uh, which is full of minerals look for gas do for petroleum which for minerals which can bring about a change in the system and you have enormous genetic problems because of close in breeding you have to address those genetic uh, disorders and endocrine disorders there are questions of malnutrition and there are questions of other forms of uh, stunted growth of girl child and others these are mental cases their anxiety cases stress trauma these things are to be addressed you need trained psychologists and psychiatrists to handle these issues uh, at the school level at the college level and at the university level you need counselors in schools you need counselors in uh, colleges in universities who can uh, psychiatrically help such disturbed child who come from broken homes which are subjected to violence which are subjected to rape teasing and other forms of horrendous harassment so the, you need lot of things to be done in jammu kashmir and uh, i uh, i must say that you are you meet passionate people who are devoted to take a career and then establish themselves in that area and help others and train others you become individual centers of excellence that is what one thing i forgot to say that uh, the chairman mao said that when these uh, people return from us or europe these chinese scientists and technologists will become individual centers of excellence around which 10 to 20 people will be put young people to train further in diverse areas and on the precondition that once they were trained they will fan out in other parts of china and create their own individual centers of excellence so that more and more young people could be trained we are not doing that we are in breeding we are not we are not moving out we are not migrating to other areas to other places where the people prefer to live in uh, cultures which are metro cultures or city cultures and same is true about the education systems that we have developed that a village child hardly can compete with a urban child an urban child cannot compete with a metro child we have stratification of education we have stratification of teaching we have stratification of syllabi we have stratification of jobs we are saying that lo you are rural in rural areas you are supposed to be a part of the subservient population which is which must be trained to serve the elite population that cannot happen that's not fair that is not possible that is not just full of discrimination the stratification of education in the form of stratification of people in bubbles jobs which, which is what is happening in jammu kashmir and in other parts of the country too i am not saying jammu is uh, kashmir is the uh, lone example it is happening it's a pandemic like corona all over the country i see it in uh, tribal areas of rajasthan the people can only write their names there is a mid day meal program inspire program dst program new growth programs of funding and let me put the final words of saying the reason for all this is institutionalized corruption bribery and criminalized administration that let me let me put it frankly i am nothing to fear about saying this on air thank you thank you sir thank you very much for talking so extensively on the topic which our students have must have gained much from your lecture thank you very much for sparing your time and coming here live with this session i hope ki agli baar bhi jab aapko bulaya jaye you will spare your time <laughs> yeah, i will i will thank you i, prom I promise you. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, uh, I would request.
डॉक्टर प्रज्ञा खन्ना प्रिंसिपल जी डी सी चनैनी हु इज हर सेल्फ अ रियल मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ ए साइंस वुमेन शी इज हैविंग सो मेनी फेदर्स टू हर कैप फ्रॉम साइंटिफिक वर्ल्ड टावरिंग पर्सनैलिटी इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंडिया सो मैम प्लीज प्रेजेंट ए फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक ओवर टू यू प्रज्ञा मैम थैंक यू डियर गुड मी i welcome all the participants on this board and it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion i on behalf of government college for women parade ground jammu and government degree college chennai extend a very hearty vote of thanks first of all to our honorable commissioner secretary department of higher education government of jnk mr talat pervez rohela in his essentia for his constant encouragement and keenness about continuously implementing well planned endeavors towards the expansion and development of the academic milieu i thank dr shaka putukochi and dr suresh bihari la the resource persons for today's webinar for their extensive insights inputs without whose contribution this webinar would never have been a success i have a deep sense of gratitude to river principal of government college for women for red ground jammu dr s p saraswat whose continuous support and enormous encouragement for taking up different types of initiatives keep us all evolving in this academic world jnk science technology and innovation council department of science and technology government of jnk is also thanked for the financial support and sponsoring to this event a big thanks is due to the organizing team particularly dr gurpreet kaur and parveen sir for putting in tremendous efforts for the organization of this program and also giving a head start to the great event i appreciate all the participants of the workshop for their attention and zeal where they all are always very keen in all the new philologicals of teaching and learning i thank you all for your participation and wish a very very good day to all of you thank you so much thank you pragya ma'am uh, that's all for okay thank you pragya ma'am um, thank you very much the participants and the speakers hope to see you all tomorrow in the webinar exactly at 11 am sharp with two distinguished speakers again on the board thank you very much thank you so much uh, thank time. you everyone thank you now we are keeping the session on for the next 5 minutes Uh, meanwhile our esteemed speakers depart back to their offices and the great work they are doing in research as you are going to switch off your cameras we are keeping it on so that we can post attendance links in the youtube chat for all the participants plus we will be sharing the attendance link right now in the three groups where we had 257 plus 257 plus 100 participants so that has been the audience for today as we inform our esteemed speakers as well we have got more than 1000 Uh, views playbacks on youtube as well we are going to ensure that each participant who has been with us will get the attendance link so for the next 5 minutes we are having uh, the link sharing on youtube as well as in the whatsapp groups that we had made but we need to inform every participant watching us today that you should attend the sessions to gain knowledge so that the attendance becomes a meaningful attendance thank you very much everyone thanks for being here tomorrow join us back on the same youtube channel for more insights and learning on this topic thank you thank you
हेलो जी हाँ Thank you. 